Because cyclohexane has the lowest ring strain due to the fact that you can have tetrahedral bond angles, cyclohexane is probably the most commonly encountered cycloalkane that you'll deal with in organic chemistry and on the MCAT. And of cyclohexane, there are often several different conformations that it can take because there are several places where it has that sort of ideal tetrahedral bond angle, but it can have different conformations. And it's good to be aware of which ones of these have the lowest potential energy overall. And so the chair conformations are the ones that have the lowest ring strain overall. And that is because the substituents are as far from each other as possible. So remember that all of these bonds have a tetrahedral conformation when you're looking at a twist or a boat or a chair. But within the chair conformation, the substituents to that ring are going to be as far from each other as possible. And so that is the lowest energy form and the form that it would prefer to exist in. Notice also that it can alternate between two different chair conformations. And we'll go through what that does to the substituents in a moment. And in order to do that, it often has to pass through a twist conformation and a boat conformation. So th these are the three ways that you'll see cyclohexane described. Chair conformation, twist conformation, and boat. Chair is the lowest energy and generally the most stable, but twist is a fairly low energy form, and boat is something that can exist in as sort of an intermediate. When you're dealing with the chair form, you can have the chair invert from one to the other, and it will often do this. It just does this spontaneously oftentimes. And when that happens, you have some substituents that are described as equatorial, whereas others are described as axial. The vertical ones are the axial substituents because those are considered to be on the axis, whereas the equatorial ones are sort of more horizontal, more like an equator, which is sort of a horizontal position near the center of the structure. A little note when you're drawing your cyclohexanes is that usually it's fairly easy to figure out how to draw the axial conformations. At this terminal point, you draw the axial one up. If it's the high terminal point, and you draw the axial substituent down if it's the low terminal point, and you just alternate from there. So low, high, low, high, low, high. And as far as drawing in your equatorial substituents, there's a fairly simple rule of thumb that can be useful in order to visualize this. When you're drawing an equatorial substituent, it's going to be at the exact same angle in your drawing as the bond that is two bonds away. So if we're drawing the substituent for this carbon, we go two positions away, and that equatorial substituent will have the same angle as that bond. You could also go two bonds away in the other direction, so you could go here and then there. And once again, this angle and that angle will be the same. And that works for every single one of these. This one here, you go one, two bonds away, and notice that that carbon-carbon bond is at that angle. That's the same angle that you'll draw for the equatorial substituent there. What happens when you move from one chair to the other chair is that you see an inversion of the chair, and when that happens, the substituents that were equatorial now become axial. So here, the red equatorial substituents are now becoming red axial substituents, whereas the ones that were previously axial, these black substituents, are now becoming equatorial. And this is very important because the most stable form within the chair conformation is when you have very, very large or non-hydrogen substituents occupying equatorial positions. Notice, for example, that if you had two large things, perhaps a, a tert-butane or tert-butyl group, that this would be very, very hindered if you had one here and one here. They would be likely to encounter each other and be crowded for space. And so the general rule is that non-hydrogen substituents experience far greater steric hindrance or steric crowding when they're in axial positions. So it's a far more cluttered and hindered position if your large substituents are axial. And what this means is that when it's choosing between which of these two inverted chair conformations that it will most likely exist in, 
it's far more favorable to find the chair conformation, which has it, as many of its bulkiest substituents in the equatorial position because those ones are far less likely to encounter each other because there's greater distance and they're sort of facing out from the center rather than just going straight up and possibly interacting with each other. And so the general rule is when you're looking at these chair conformations, notice that both chairs are very low energy and thus very stable. But when given a choice between these two, the one that has the bulkiest substituents occupying equatorial positions will be the most stable and thus it will be the most favored and the form that you're going to be most likely to encounter that cyclohexane derivative in.